All right, good morning and welcome to Mixed Level Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Please start in a comfortable seat. I'd like to read a little bit from an interesting article I found in continuation of yesterday's theme, Unity Consciousness. In a time where we can kind of feel reactivity with elections and the pandemic and whatever's happening in your own household, it can feel pretty divisive. So it's great to remember how we are connected even in these tough times. So here's an article by Vagabond Temple blog. If we closely watch our minds, we will find a tendency to label or categorize other people based on our pre-existing ideas and standards. Like when you first meet someone, maybe you size up how they look, the way they dress, how they speak, what they do for a living once you start the conversation. And this can lead to either positive or negative judgments about that person from the start. Well, this is normal. This is human survival instinct. In the practice of the second limb of yoga, Ishvari Pranidhana is one of those spiritual practice. It relates to the practice of being close to the divine. And here divine is the collective oneness that we are all part of. One way to practice this is through the process of transfiguration, seeing the divinity in other people. That sounds beautiful, but sometimes it can be pretty difficult when we put labels clouding our vision. If we try to see the divine in the other, rather than whatever labels or pictures our mind has produced, we will not only learn to see it in ourselves, but we will bring out the best in the other person. Hmm. In Western existential philosophy, people like Jean-Paul Sartre explain that people have limited themselves through their life choices and can always change, choosing from endless possibilities. However, many of us have forgotten that we have made these choices and that they can be changed. People are much more than their attributes. And thus identifying with the attributes is seen as a form of self-deception or inauthenticity. To practice transfiguration, we must try and look beyond the superficial nature of the person formed by our preconceived ideas and their limited nature. This can be difficult with close family that we may have built years of complex relationships with that have deep emotional charge. And the situation is even harder by the fact that we seem to be living in a society that thrives on looking for things that are wrong with people, with certain behaviors and actions increasingly being labeled as diseases, diseases or disorders. This may encourage us to see ourselves and others and defective in some way when in actuality to really see another person we need to focus on their strengths rather than reinforce their supposed limitations this is not something to be done out of sympathy rather it is a matter of truth all human beings do have infinite potential and are part of the divine wholeness in the Bhagavad Gita, one of the ancient important texts in India, the warrior Arjuna looks into the eyes of Krishna and sees the entire universe reflected back. The point of this exchange was to show Arjuna that he too is part of the divine whole, as are all human beings. Practice, and here's a, an exercise that you might try, of course, with the other person's permission, practice sitting in extended periods of eye contact. And then after the initial awkwardness has passed, you might feel a deepened connection. As in ancient Indian philosophy and other Eastern traditions, they view the eyes as energy gates and eye contact as a way of truly connecting with the essence of the other person. And through this process, you might even see your own reflection, literally and deeply. So even if concepts like divinity and oneness seem strange to you, seeing beyond the superficial view of the other and focusing on their strengths will bring many rewards, including a deeper connection with others 
and an expanded understanding of yourself. Plus, what feels better to focus on what you don't like about somebody or what you can see as positive? Because that does, the energy of what we're focusing on does ripple back to us. So if we're really to move forward toward a more awakened and compassionate society, there must be unity. The good news is that the unity is already there and we just need to learn to see it. So let's begin sitting tall, closing the eyes, letting your hands rest on your lap. Allow a moment to just pay more attention, perhaps first to your external environment and what you can feel to your senses, the air, sounds, any vibration or movement. And as though walking closer to your own self, bring your attention to your physical body, slowly scanning from head to toe. As you observe any sensations, including tightness, notice if there is a tendency to judge them perhaps even as something wrong with you. And if you do notice such a thing, or not at all, perhaps you smile and just be happy that you noticed. Allow this feeling of neutral observation to enter your breathing. I notice that the breath begins to change just because you're paying more attention to it. Let it be natural. Let your breath guide you into what it's trying to say about your nervous system, your emotional state, your mental being. As you dive deeper into the layers of self, what exists in the emotional layer right now? Perhaps bringing your mind's eye to your heart energy center around the middle of your chest, observing any felt sense, like a lightness, heaviness, a tingling sensation. As you notice your thoughts too, is there a quality of thought that is repeating in this moment, perhaps affected by your emotional state? Notice how going through the layers from physical exterior to inner being, we can perhaps build a deeper understanding. And as we practice that with ourselves this hour, allow it to strengthen your muscle to practice that with the so-called others you encounter today, looking beyond the exterior layers to find an interconnection. And now as you slow down your breath, easing into the very top, perhaps hovering there for a few seconds and slowly letting go and perhaps hovering there for a few seconds. Listen in to any sound in your breathing. Allow a few exhales to release from your mouth. And then after, close your lips 
and continue your breathing through your nose. Bring your attention to your belly as you place your hands there. Feel your belly expand and softly contract. Focus a bit more on the contraction as you draw your navel inward towards your spine while still lifting your spine tall, grounding your pelvis, relaxing your shoulders back and down. As we start to quicken the breath into a rhythm, focus on the exhalations, drawing your navel inward towards your spine, still breathing through your nose like this. You might try a few times and rest if needed, but try to create a rhythm that you can sustain for one minute of practice. Stoking the digestive fire in Kapali Bhati Pranayama, an energizing and heating breath, breath and fire. So I'm going to start the timer here for one minute. Do what you can. Ready, begin. Notice as you keep a rhythm, does tension start to arise in your shoulders, neck, or face? Try to keep your upper body cool as you stoke the fire of your belly. Listen to the rhythmic percussion of your belly drawing in. Then take a deep inhale, holding your breath. Think of lifting your pelvic floor as you draw your lower belly inward and up towards your heart. Through your lips, softly let it go. Closing the lips, place your two hands to stack just below your belly button. Visual your spine as you take your next inhale. Bring your mind's eye up each vertebra to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, down from the crown to the base of your spine, equalizing the giving and receiving to your breath. As you softly constrict the back of your throat, listening to the smooth transitions between your breaths. Nurturing ease and awareness through ujjayi pranayama or victorious breathing. Softly open your eyes and please find your two blocks. Taking the first block by the skinniest width, that's the side, and extending your legs forward onto your mat so that you can hug your block between your ankles, just like this. The second block in one hand as you lower onto your back to lie down. Now, as you hug the block between your ankles, allow the muscles in your legs to activate. The quadriceps help to lift the kneecap slightly towards your frontal hip bones. The calves awaken. Flexing your feet, spread your toes, and press the mounds of your big toes forward, heels forward. Feel a lengthening ever so slightly of your tailbone towards your inner heels. Now keep that activity in your legs as that's what you would like to feel when you are in mountain pose, standing upright. Now start with your arms down by your sides and just put that second block down for a moment. Pretend you're mountain, mountain pose with your palms face up, arms down by your sides and draw your shoulder heads into the ground behind you. Slide your shoulder blades down your back and feel the natural space between your chin and chest as you lengthen towards the back of your room through the crown of your head. 
using the points of contact between your body and the ground as a reference point of stacking the major joints in your body. That is your shoulder girdle, above your pelvic girdle, above your ankles, as if you were standing. Now feel the bottom of your frontal hip bones. You might even use your fingers. If you're like me and they like to protrude forward when you're really trying to stand tall, encourage them to soften inward towards the back of your body, slightly decreasing the space between the ground and your lower back, and allow the bottom front ribs to smooth and down towards your pubic bone. Now feel how that requires activity in your abdomen. Just like we warmed it up, keeping that engaged as well as your legs, now take the second block. Raising your arms towards the sky, use this, the uh, widest width of the block, this side, in between your palms, palms flat, facing each other. Hug the block firmly, just like your ankles are doing to the second block, and draw your shoulder heads back into the ground and down your back away from your neck, sealing your front ribs in, activating your feet and legs. Now notice the space between your ears and your shoulders, maintaining that space. Inhale, begin to lift your arms towards overhead, stopping at the point before your shoulders might rise towards your ears. So that might be a little more forward of your face rather than totally towards the back wall. Staying here a few breaths, keep squeezing the blocks, keep lengthening the tailbone towards your inner heels, Keep spreading your toes, pressing the mounds of your big toes forward. Softening your front ribs into your back body and down towards your pubic bone. Is there any tension in the face? Take notice of that or in the quality of your breathing. Now keep your ankles doing the same thing and on your next exhale, slowly lower your arms forward. The block touches the fronts of your thighs going to go up and down so be aware of engaging the belly so the front ribs don't begin to lift higher away from the ground inhale slowly raise your arms towards overhead just to the degree that you can maintain length through the sides of your neck front ribs in exhale arms forward then down so the hands are like a clamp you're not using your thumbs to grip the block but you're using the muscles in your arms inhale up the arms towards overhead exhale down belly stays firm try three more cycles of breath on your own and throughout this repetitive movement be aware of any parts of, of the body that start to lose focus like if the front ribs begin to protrude a bit more towards the sky or the feet become lax or the shoulders start to hunch up towards the ears Smile at your awareness and bring it back to focus. On your next inhale, raise your arms towards overhead. Now keep flexing your feet, hugging the first block. Let go of the second block and then flex your wrists so that your palms are facing up towards the sky or maybe even towards the rear wall. Draw the shoulder blades down, hug the front ribs in. Two more breaths, breathe in. Tailbone towards inner heels, inner thighs towards the sky. Keep breathing. And let it all go. Kick the block between your ankles off to the side. Bend your knees into your chest and rock a little side to side to massage your lower back. Mm. Whether you rock to one side or begin to rock forward and back, make your way up to sit. taking your two blocks and placing them off to the sides by the top of your mat. We'll use them again in a moment. Let's come on to all fours and turn out the hands to stretch the inner wrists and forearms. So spin your fingertips either towards the outer sides of your mat or knees or to whatever degree. Knees slightly behind hips, wrists just under shoulders. Moving into cat cow pose, breathing in, glide your spine forward, then coil your chest up. Keep lifting the navel towards your spine. As you exhale, contract your abdomen, 
Begin to look down between your knees as you tuck your tailbone under your body. Inhale towards a flat back before coiling your chest up. Exhale, contract your belly to round your back. Take a couple more cycles on your own of cat-cow pose or bidalasana. Let's lean back onto our legs. We're gonna do a little shoulder stretch as you sit back towards your shins or whatever's comfortable for you. So cactus bend your elbows apart, cross your right elbow over the left. Either hook your thumbs or wrap your forearms and palms. Press your shoulder blades down your back ribs and feel them broaden across your upper back. Lift your elbows to the height of your shoulders as you lengthen your neck. Gently press your forearms away from your face. And now feel the alignment of those major joints in your body from your shoulder girdle to your pelvic girdle. Feel them stack on the left and right sides. And now as you breathe in from the base of your spine, direct your gaze up to the crown of your head, feeling the length. And as you breathe out from the crown of your head, looking down to the base of your spine, feeling the length. Take another inhalation, lift your elbows a little higher if you can, and then exhale, back stroke your arms back to that cactus bend and switch the cross of the elbow on top, either hooking your thumbs or wrapping your forearms and palms. Draw your shoulder heads back and down, your elbows to the height of your shoulders. Gently press your forearms away from your face. Feel the freedom and space between your ears and shoulders. Breathe in, mind's eye from the tailbone to crown. Breathe out from crown down to tailbone. One more full breath. So can you feel the broadening apart of your shoulder blades across your back ribs? We'll want to integrate some of that protraction into the next posture we're about to practice. Inhale, lift the elbows a little higher if you can. Exhale, back stroke your arms and just give your shoulders and maybe head a gentle dance. All right, let's set the blocks up at the top of your mat on their tallest height. Face them apart so they are exactly your shoulders distance apart. Place your index finger behind the center of each block, grazing the blocks. Thumbs wide, stretching towards each other, palms flat. Now with your wrists directly under your shoulders, knees directly under your hips, gaze at the ground between the blocks and feel the broadening of your shoulder blades, the broadening of your chest. Feel your front ribs lift to seal in towards the back of your body and draw your tailbone energetically back towards your rear wall, crown of your head towards your front wall. Keep lengthening your spine. You might imagine breathing from tailbone to crown and from crown to tailbone while lifting your center. So you're now in plank pose, modified. If you're feeling very energized already, you might come into straight legs, a full plank, pressing the heels back so they're right above the balls of your feet and the fronts of your thighs engaged, just like when we were lying on the floor. Feel that, that mountain pose alignment. So as you inhale, begin to glide forward so much that your shoulders hover towards the front edge of the blocks. And as you exhale, bend your elbows to hug your side ribs and you might tap the blocks, but more important that you bend your elbows 90 degrees. So it depends on the length of your arms. Stopping here, lift the belly, gaze forward, broaden your chest, broaden your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, contract your belly like breath of fire and push up through plank. Knees down if legs are straight and you need to take a rest. So that is one cycle of a yoga push up that we're gonna try three to five cycles up. Not so important how many times you do it, but more about the integrity of the alignment, breath, and focus. 
So feel front ribs in, gaze forward, shoulder blades wide. On your own, inhale forward. Exhale, bend 90 degrees to hug your sides. Pause as you breathe in, lengthen. Arrange alignment here with the support of the blocks. Exhale, lift, engaging the belly. Glide back to plank or lower the knees. Keep going, inhale forward. Exhale into Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, pause, lengthen, feel alignment. Exhale, press up and glide back to plank, maybe knees down. Once or twice more, follow your breath rhythm. Notice when you hold Chaturanga Dandasana, that halfway point, do the shoulders start to tense up towards the neck? Do the shoulder blades begin to squeeze together? If so, lower your knees and add more support so you can make those alignment adjustments that will offer you more benefit and freedom from injury in the future. When you're finished, turn your blocks down to the medium height so they create a number 11. And let's give our shoulders a stretch. Place your elbow on top of the center of each block. Press your fingertips into each other. Hollow the center of your palms. Walk your knees back as much as you need so that you can begin to trace your thumbs down the back of your skull towards the back of your neck. While rotating your triceps towards the floor to help broaden your shoulders. Lowering your head, lowering your chest, hollow your armpits up and slightly lift your belly to support the length of your lower back. Let's take three to five more deep breaths here. Letting the shoulders descend away from your neck. With an exhalation, contract your belly and slowly lift. Put the blocks aside. And let's make our way up to stand at the top of the mat. Separating your feet, hips distance parallel. Let's enter a, into a continuous flow of three sun salutation A's. Take notice of when you pass through that four limb staff or Chaturanga Dandasana push up position. Bring that into the flow. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead into Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hinge to fold in Uttanasana. Press with your fingertips. Inhale, lengthen halfway up into Ardha Uttanasana. Lower back to plank. And exhale, glide forward. Imagine tapping the blocks, hugging the elbows in. And then either come all the way down or flip your toes, choosing cobra or upward facing duck. Feel the belly support as you lift your pelvis back to enter downward facing dog for three to five breaths. As you let your head release, rotate your triceps towards the earth. When you're ready, bend your knees, look ahead. At the bottom of your breath, hold it out and walk or float to the top. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Rooting through your feet, inhale, rise. Watch your palms meet as the shoulders relax. Exhale, your arms down by your sides, mountain pose. Twice more, inhale, sweep the space around you. Exhale, dive in. Inhale, offer your heart forward, either step to plank or flow into Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale as you blossom your chest open from down through the tops of your feet. Exhale, lift through your center, back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog for three to five breaths. Facing yourself, take the third, the last sun salutation A on your own. We'll meet in downward facing.
A few breaths in downward facing dog. Can you feel your bottom of your front ribs sealing inward towards the back of your body and towards your pubic bone, offering equal length in the front and back of your spine? Feel the lift of your sitting bones as you let your weight descend through the backs of your legs, down through your heels. Then firming your outer hips towards your midline in an effort to keep them balanced. Inhale, raise your right leg from the inner thigh, flex the foot. Pause for a few breaths and look down under your belly at your right toes facing the ground, not the right wall. Feel your two arms equally long as you lift both shoulders back and drop your head. Draw your left outer hip back. Feel the equal length in both sides of your waist. Take another inhalation and begin to bend the right knee slowly towards your nose, rounding forward as you contract the belly to softly step your right foot just inside of your right hand. Stay on the ball of your left foot. Feel your feet hips width apart and parallel without moving your legs visibly. Energetically scissor them towards each other and feel stability to slowly rise into crescent lunge. Bending your left knee, direct your tailbone downward, your frontal hip bones to slightly lift. Then you might straighten the left leg if you can keep that alignment of your pelvis upright. Now remember when we're lying on our backs, holding that block between our palms? Can you bring that energy into your hands, arms, and even front ribs sealing in towards your back? while taking notice of how you're maintaining optimal length between ears and shoulders. Let's take three more breaths as you steady your gaze. Now bringing arms down by your sides, palms facing forward, keep that torso alignment of shoulders and pelvis, front ribs in. Begin to hinge forward to create a strong diagonal line of energy from crown of your head, tailbone to inner left heel. Belly hovering off of right thigh, right outer hip scissoring back to keep the squaring of your hips forward. Last two breaths. Find ease through your breathing. Soften the muscles in your face. Spinning your left heel to the ground, cartwheel your arms and turn left into warrior two. Slide your right heel to align with the arch of your left foot. As your left leg slightly turns inward, allow your right leg to completely turn out. Right sitting bone wrapping under your body as you bend your front knee right over the ankle to face forward. Top of left thigh bone firming back behind you. And as your spine lengthens, centered between your hands, between your feet, steady your gaze again. Another four breaths. With an exhale, lower your hands. Plank pose, let's pause for three breaths. Gazing on the ground ahead, broaden your shoulder blades, broaden your chest. Lifting your navel towards your spine. Lengthen your tailbone towards your inner heels if your legs are straight. Firm your heels back and feel the muscles in your legs engaged like you're squeezing a block between your ankles. Keeping all of that activity with an exhale, glide forward. Bend your elbows back through Chaturanga Dandasana. Feel the length of your neck, the broadening of your shoulders and chest. Then slowly lower to the ground. Let your forehead rest as you point your toes on the mat. Then cactus bend your elbows apart so they're in line with your shoulders. Think of your shoulders, neck, head, arms, hands, all in one piece. Then as you keep your feet on the floor, firmly rooted knees off the ground, pelvis on the ground, begin to contract the muscles right under your shoulder blades. Inhale to lift your chest, head, shoulders, arms, hands in one piece, and then stay another four breaths. As you 
Roll the fronts of your shoulders further back and slide the shoulder blades down your back. Notice if you're able to turn your palms a little more to face forward, not moving from your wrists, but from your upper back and shoulders. And you feel all 10 toenails firming into the ground, navel even drawing up slightly towards the spine, not lax. With an exhalation, plant your hands alongside your floating ribs and tuck your toes to press up into plank pose. Pause and feel the length from crown to heels. Then exhale, lift the pelvis into downward dog. Allow a few breaths to digest. Now, as you firm your outer hips towards your midline, lift from your inner thigh. Inhale, flex your left foot off the ground behind you and pause and breathe. Look under your belly and see that your left toes are spread to face the floor, not turned open to the left side. Draw your right outer hip back to equally lengthen from both armpits to both hips. Feel your arms equally long as you lift both shoulders equidistant from your ears. How's your breathing? Take a deep breath in. And exhale, bend your left knee slowly towards your nose. Feel the lifting of your navel as you round forward and gently step the left foot inside of your left hand. Stay high on the ball of your right foot. As you energetically, but not visibly, scissor your legs towards each other and slowly rise to crescent pose. Now bending your right knee, let your tailbone anchor downward and your frontal hip bones slightly lift towards the lowest front ribs as you seal those ribs in. Bending your left knee just over the heel, feel stability through your legs and center. Feel buoyancy at your heart, your crown. Steady your gaze for three more breaths in crescent lunge. Bringing your arms down by your sides with palms facing forward, continue to broaden your chest and shoulders and lengthen your neck. With your navel active, begin to tilt your torso forward, creating a straight line of energy from the crown of your head down your spine, from your tailbone to your inner right heel. Continue to scissor your left hip back so both hips are facing forward and the belly is lifted, only hovering over your left thigh. Last two breaths. Can you soften something? Now spinning your right heel to the ground, back stroke your right arm and reach the left arm forward. Slide your left foot to the right to align that heel with the arch of your right foot in warrior two. Use the turning inward of your right leg to allow the complete turn out of your left as you bend the front knee just over the ankle facing forward. Drawing the top of your right thigh bone back towards the left edge of your mat, feel your pelvis aligned upright, nurturing length up your spine. And as you open your arms, steady your gaze, perhaps just past your left hand, entering four more conscious breaths here. Deep breath in, exhale your hands to the ground, step plank. Now we're gonna do a micro push up from plank. Inhale, glide forward, only two inches. Exhale, bend your elbows back. So it's half of halfway down pretty much. Pause as you inhale, lift through the belly and push up as you exhale, gliding back to plank. Maybe the knees come down twice more. Inhale forward, keep looking forward. Exhale, two inches down, hug the elbows in, shoulder blades apart. Inhale here, feel center contain. From center, exhale, push up. 
and glide back. Last one, inhale forward, exhale two inches, inhale pause, feel freedom and space in upper body, exhale lift, downward facing down. Breathe in, smoothen your breath out. Let's walk the hands back towards your feet, coming into Padahastasana forward folds. Bending your knees if you need, lift your toes to slip your palms face up under the soles of your feet to stretch your outer wrists and forearms. Shifting your weight forward, slightly heavier onto the balls of your feet. Inhale, imagine pressing your heart through the gates of your arms as you lengthen your spine. Keep the length and exhale, hinge from your hips, dropping your skull while floating your shoulders up away from it. Twice more. Inhale, halfway rise, lengthen as you gaze forward. Exhale, hinge forward. Perhaps you bend the elbows apart. Inhale, lift the chest, lengthen the sides of your waist and neck. Keep the lengths and exhale, fold. Three breaths here. It might feel soothing to shake the head out softly or to flutter the lips if you know that you're carrying tension in your jaw. Sometimes when concentrating, we might start to create more rigidity in the face or other areas. So be aware of that and find ease, a balance of effort and ease. Now release the hands from under, bring down to the tops of your feet the bottoms of your feet and inhale circle your arms to rise ah, arms down by your sides so let's come into a standing balancing pose bringing your right hand to your right hip feel your two outer hips hug your midline just as we prepared from downward dog to try to keep the hips even when we lifted a leg back now, feel as though you're lying on the ground. Remember those points of contact that remind you to stack your shoulder girdle above your pelvic girdle, girdle above your ankles. Try to keep those blocks stacked. Bend your left knee off the floor. Catch it with your hand, your left hand. And now flexing the left foot, engage the muscles in both legs. Level the hips. Draw in the bottom of the front ribs. Keep stacking shoulders over hips. Now, if you're gonna move towards straightening the left leg to some degree, bring your left arm inside of the leg and clasp the big toe with your index and middle fingers or use a strap around the ball of your foot. Slowly extending the leg forward. Draw your left back and down to keep the alignment of two shoulders over two hips. Mostly to keep your spine upright and vertical, connected to your center line. Then raising your right arm, draw both shoulder blades down. Steady your gaze for three more breaths. In hand to big toe pose. And you feel a connection to warrior three here, perhaps. Or downward facing back. Then slow your left foot, your two arms, back to mountain pose. Take a few breaths to notice. Now imagine you're hugging that skinny block between your ankles and you're pressing down through the four corners of your feet, spreading your toes. Feel the activity in your legs. Feel the bottom front ribs soften in and towards your pubic bone. Feel the shoulders stack above the hips, the crown above the tailbone. Bring your left hand to your left hip. As you bend your right knee, flex your right foot and catch the outer knee with your right hand, re-leveling your two hips as you firm them towards your midline. Keep standing tall as you rebound your weight off the ground, your left foot. Now, if you're going to explore straightening your right leg, use your strap or bring your arm inside the leg and clasp your big toe. As you extend the right leg, draw your right shoulder bone back and down to keep your shoulders balanced and balancing above your hips. Lifting and grounding, 
raise your left arm and let's feel in to balance and unity within all these teams of muscles and joints and inner being and outer being mind breath focus slowly release your right foot and your two arms and just allow a few breaths to observe So in today's practice, I invite you to play with an inversion called L-shaped pose. Ladies, if you're menstruating or anybody, if you're veering away from putting weight on your hands and lifting your legs up, then you can lie on your back and use a wall or just simply lie on your back with an imaginary wall, lifting your legs up to rest like this. This is a restorative inversion. Now, for those of you coming into the active L-shaped pose, you may like to bring your mat perpendicular to the wall so you have some traction. Just like this. Then, using a block, come to sit with your back against the wall, flush against the wall, extending your legs so that you can use the block to designate where the edge of your heels land. You're just measuring your legs distance. Then where the edge of your heels landed, you'll place the heels of your palms coming down to all fours, spreading your fingers as though preparing for downward dog. Broaden the shoulder blades and chest, feel the navel engage. Tucking your toes, you'll lift your hips into downward dog with your heels against the wall. Wrapping your triceps towards the earth, hugging the front ribs in, and creating space in your neck and shoulders. Coming into L shape, you firm your feet into the wall until your legs are parallel to the ground and you add an L shape. So sometimes the tendency is to go too high because it feels safer or to slide down the wall because it's scary. It is scary if it's not familiar, it takes practice. So you hug in the front ribs, you press the ground away, you press the wall away. Maybe you lift one leg up like we did standing up just recently, flexing the foot. Finding that vertical line as you lift that heel towards the sky. Maybe you switch. Feel the front ribs in. And when you decide, come down to child's pose. Try to keep your head low if you've been upside down for a while. So let's take another minute. If you're choosing to practice the restorative L shape or the active L shape, take rest when needed. You're using the counter forces of the ground and your hands and your feet and the wall. When you feel that you're finished and you've rested in child's pose for a few breaths, please slowly roll your torso upright to sit your legs in front of you and find your strap in case you want to use it for shoulder support. Oops. Entering Gomukhasana, cow face pose. So have a seat with your left leg forward and cross your right thigh over the left to stack your knees down your midline. Then you can decide if it's appropriate to splay both feet apart. That's if the two hips can be evenly grounded and the spine is easily. With your right leg on top, hold the strap from your left hand and dangle it behind you. 
rotating your left tricep forward, bend the elbow behind your head. Drop your left palm between your shoulder blades. Relax both shoulders down and reach your right hand underneath behind you. Catch your other hand. Walk your hands close together. Your shoulders do that. First clasp. As you root downward to your sitting bones, and in your chest. Exhale, begin to hinge forward from your hips, maintaining the natural space at your throat. Go Mukhasana, cow face pose. On your next inhalation, lead from your chest to slowly rise up. Release your arms, release your legs. Perhaps add some movement. Now taking your left thigh to stack over the right, either keep your bottom leg straight or splay your feet apart. Hold the strap in your right hand, dangling it behind you. Wrapping your right tricep forward, bend the elbow behind your head. Landing your right palm between your shoulder blades. Reach your left hand under, grab the other end of the strap, and walk your hands as close together. Maybe your fingers clasp. As you firm downward, lift through the center of your spine, broaden and lift your chest as your shoulders descend. Exhaling, explore hinging forward from your hips. Feel the natural space between chin and chest. On your next inhale, lead from the center of your chest to rise and let your arms and legs go. Splaying your legs apart into sort of a straddle Upavishta Kanasana. You could place your hands behind your pelvis, lift the pelvis, flex the feet, and see if the pelvis will land forward. Then cup the veins of your thighs and rotate them slightly back so as you ground your sitting two stakes, you're setting up a tent. Lift up through the frontal hip bones, your spine, and place your fingertips in front of you, maybe on blocks. Now keeping your knees pointing up, your toes flexed and pointing up. Lift the chest. And perhaps with your exhales, you begin to walk your hands forward, keeping your sitting bones grounded, belly slightly firming in to support the length of your back. Now you could arrange your blocks like a tower, resting your forehead on top or your forearms onto, however you want to use your props to support the fullest length of your spine. Let's take five more breaths here. Then slowly crawl your hands towards your body as you lift to your chest, rising up. Bring your hands to your outer thighs and close your legs till your feet meet the front of your mat. Take one of your blocks for bridge pose. We're gonna take two rounds, bridge, and then the second one, possibly restorative bridge or upward facing bow, if you wanna change it up. Hug that skinny block between your thighs as you separate your feet, ground them. Arms forward, take your time slowly lowering onto your back. When your head meets the ground, arms down by your sides, slide your feet back until you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. Grounding through the four corners of your feet and shoulders, breathe in to lift your pelvis, actively lengthening your tailbone towards the space between your knees. 
Now count another five to eight breaths before you lower on an exhalation. Walk your upper arms closer together under your back ribs. If your hands touch while the arms are straight, you might interlace your fingers. Then also root down to your outer upper arms, keeping your thighs parallel, your feet parallel by hugging the block allows support to lengthen your lower back. Now imagine, without visible movement, that you're dragging your heels towards your glutes. Notice the activation of your hamstrings and glutes. Counter that with lengthening your thigh bones forward towards your front wall. Perhaps you feel more opening in your hip flexors. Tilting your chin away from your chest, open your throat. Find freedom of breath, deep inhalations. When you've decided to lower, allow about three breaths to just rest, not hugging the knees in towards your chest. Should you choose to practice bridge the same way, feel free, five to 10 breaths. Restorative bridge, use the block under your sacrum to rest on and stay there. Upward facing bow, keep the block between your thighs and plant your hands flat alongside your ears Fingertips slightly turned out and facing your shoulders. Now you'll want to keep your arms parallel. Be aware that the elbows remain shoulders distance. Lifting your pelvis like bridge, if you're entering upward bow, press to your hands and bring the top of your head to the floor. Re-parallel your arms. It might require splaying the hands a little wider apart. Lift the shoulders away from your neck and then perhaps push off hands and feet to lift the head. Bring the same energy of dragging your heels towards your glutes while lengthening your thigh bones forward and hugging the block. Let your head hang free as your shoulders rise away from it. Wrapping your triceps forward with the same actions we've been practicing in downward dog. And then after five or so breaths, when you decide to come down, if from Urdhva Dhanurasana, reverse the stages slowly. Top of the head lands on the floor, pause. Tuck the chin towards your chest, then slowly lower your spine. You might give your wrists a stretch by interlacing your fingers and rolling out your hands. But now let's put the block aside if you still have it between your thighs. Separate your feet wider than hips width. Separate your knees just as much. Then drop your knees both to the right and align your left knee down the midline of your mat for an open twist, helping to release your psoas on the left side. If you need a deeper release, cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh and perhaps raise your arms overhead to catch hold of opposite bent elbows while releasing the shoulders away from your ears. I invite you to take deeper breaths into your belly and longer exhalations to your mouth. <sighs> Using this breath technique to more deeply calm your nervous system and also stimulate your digestive system. How beautiful that we have so many systems effectively working at once. Like we have a galaxy within our human body. It's so much that we don't have to think about doing like digestion and breathing. Yet they're all in harmony, powerful forces working together as a collective. Let's uncross the legs, come back to center, separate the feet wider than hips width, and drop your knees to the left. Point your right knee down the center line of your mat. Perhaps add crossing your left ankle over your right thigh, and maybe switching hold of the other elbow on top overhead. Breathe into your stomach. Allow slower exhales to your mouth.
uncrossing your legs. Perhaps you draw your knees into your chest. One last finishing posture movement. If you're hugging yourself, close your eyes. I invite you to take a slow, mindful inhalation. Holding the breath as you relax your body. Exhale to your mouth as you let it all go. Let your body rest in stillness. Your breath flow freely. And your awareness to soften deeper within. Shavasana. Continuing to rest here for just another minute. I invite you to think of three positive qualities you appreciate about yourself. Thinking of your own strengths. invite you to call to mind another being whom you may have judged in some way, perhaps negatively. And can you think of three positive qualities or strengths you can genuinely appreciate about them? Perhaps this is a process to continue after yoga, but it might be a helpful exercise when we start to find ourselves judging the other, especially in superficial layers of awareness. And maybe you find someone who consents to an extended sitting period of eye contact with you today, practicing deeper connection. Slowly allow your body to move and guide you into rising into a comfortable seat.
Allow your palms to meet at the center of your chest, bowing in from crown to heart, mind and heart coherence. Let's close with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. Um. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.